to understand modes, you have to hear the modes. Okay, guys? Critical. Now, the modes are one of these mysterious things. People get lost with the idea of modes. They are conflated to be this difficult thing, but they aren't really, because just by adding an O into the word mode, you can get the idea of what a mode does, its function, its purpose. The reason we talk about uh, modes is because we want to tap into the moods. To really understand what the modes are, you have to hear them. Hearing the modes is the way that we understand them because otherwise we have no context. I mean, it's okay saying, yeah, something is Phrygian or whatever. If you know what I'm on about here with these, the, the modes in order, uh, you, can, you can remember it with this little phrase, I don't particularly like modes a lot. Yeah, I-D-P-L-M-A-L. Yeah, it pull mal. You could remember it that way, the order of the seven modes. If you have no idea what the modes are, guys, then, then this is basically, I'm just going to show you some moods that you can play on the guitar. And it's really simple. What we're going to do is we're going to offer this E string here. This E string here is the counterpoint to everything that we play. And this, because this E, this E here is the foundation note, what you'll hear is, you'll hear discord or concord. Dis means against and con means with. So the, the sound of the notes will either sound with the E string or they will sound against it. And if it sounds against, that's the tension idea. And then if it's with, it's this releasing idea. And because I'm doing this using my E string here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play a mode pattern at the seventh fret because this is an E. So if I go A, B, C, D, E, you can see that's an E there. This is an E here, this open E here. There's an octave between those two there. But because I'm using this E string as my reference, then what you'll get is a good uh, resolution. Now, as I've talked about octaves before, we're going to use the A-shaped octave. And to find the A-shaped octave, if you take this E here, this note, and you move up two frets over two strings, then you find the octave. So this is an E, this is an E, and this is an E. So those are three E's there, guys. And what I have said in previous videos before is that when we do these octaves we can think of the octaves as being bookends if we think of them as being bookends then the idea is we can put the books that we want in between there they could be i'm going to sneeze i'm not going to sneeze they're going to be cookery books they could be books on maths and physics they could be music books they could be books on ancient egypt it could be anything that you want in there but the thing is the subject of those books is going to determine the sound of what's inside these bookmarks now like i say there are seven modes there are seven modes yeah and of those six of them are super useful you will use them all the time the seventh one which is called Locrian, eh, it's a bit of a tough one to to really sell but we we might do it just for the sake of completion but the thing i want you to do is i want you to think of this bookmark here and then what we're going to do is we're going to play a minor pentatonic pattern now this is the thing the pentatonic is a skeleton and if you add extra notes to it you will get other scales the minor pentatonic scale here if i add extra notes to it two more notes to be specific i will get another scale and those scales are what we call the modes without getting too technical into in this because what i want to do is i want to play these for you so that you can hear the sound and you can hear the quality of the mode and think do i dig that sound is that something i want to add to my vocabulary right now um would it be something nice to play around with so the first mode in that sequence i don't particularly like modes a lot or id pull mal is Ionian. Ionian is another word for major. So essentially, if I play a major scale, don't worry guys, I'll put a little PDF together and I'll put a link in this video here. If I play this here, 
then you can see we've got that full major scale do re mi fa so la ti do now that sounds cool on its own but to give it context like i say we ring out this e string just by offering that E string and I was playing some thirds in there as well which are very very pretty and some other little two note shapes that give it context and make it more musical you can hear that's quite pleasant and happy and that is the sound of the Ionian or the major if you will and just going back a minute again, sorry, just backtracking a little bit there because I did say that the pentatonic, I mentioned the pentatonic, so we have the major pentatonic that lives in there as well. And by adding, yeah, so if we have the major pentatonic, by adding this little shape in the middle, we get that Ionian or major scale. Yeah. major pentatonic you should know the major pentatonic because it sounds like my girl now the second mode is a minor mode and what we do is we build that around the skeleton of the minor pentatonic which is this now we add two more notes to that these are still within the confines of our book ends here There is the second mode, which is the Dorian mode. Now, if you listen to this one. We've got this minor pentatonic pattern here. But what we do is we add a major second and a major sixth. So we're adding those two notes. Those are the two notes that we add to the minor pentatonic to get Now if I play a minor 7 chord there can hear that it gives us this jazzy quality yeah now if I play it with the jazz rhythm now here's a little tip guys this is how you play jazz rhythm you say the word slice of pizza yeah so slice of pizza slice of pizza so you can hear you get that jazziness to it but it, for me, it also sounds very sort of old English, sort of English folk, you know, Scarborough Fair, that kind of thing. It's a really, really mellow minor scale. So it's quite dark, but it, it's a good one. So far, just to recap, we've got bookmarks. Here's the Dorian. marks again so like I say I'm shifting what kind of books I have inside those bookends there sorry book bookends so we've got those there now the next mode is Phrygian so the Phrygian yeah has the same minor pentatonic pattern inside it but it's got a flat second there and because that's so close to the root we get the jaws thing which means there's tension because I'm sure John Williams wouldn't have written it if it had a, a ma an optimistic major second. No. Yeah, we want this. There's the flat third. And we also get this minor sixth as well. There we go. Now 
And you could also hear with this one, I kind of think of this as one as being the Spanish minor. So if I played... That's called a Phrygian cadence. Yeah, so... You know, you can hear this gets used a hell of a lot in heavy metal as well. So the Phrygian is one. If you love your metal, Phrygian is one that you definitely need to learn. But there is the quality of that scale. It still belongs to an E minor chord. If I turn it to an E major, then I get a bit more dramatic sort of Spanish-ish sound yeah so we get that there right so that is phrygian right we're on to the fourth mode here so we've done ionian dorian phrygian the fourth mode is called lydian i love the names of these apparently they are greek tribes i wouldn't put too much value in the names of them they don't really mean anything they're just names of Greek tribes because these are called the church modes or the Greek modes. So what we'll do is we play that major pentatonic like we did before. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a major scale. I'm going to take the fourth note and we're going to sharpen it. We're going to have a sharp four in there. And this is the brightest of all the modes is this one. And you can hear when I hit that sharp four against that root note, it, there's quite a lot of tension because we're getting the tritone there, which is the devil's interval, also known as the devil's interval. We get that one in there. that's kind of got this kind of spacey sound if you if you ever heard stuff by joe satriani or steve by those guys love the lydian and in fact i think if you think frank zappa he loved the lydian as well so and it also gets used in jazz as well so it, it has multiple uses but the mood of it it's slightly unsettling if you listen to those bookends again so you can see i'm just playing all this in one position guys you know that like i say though i'll bang a pdf up and and, I f and go back to that lydian just to kind of reiterate the lydian there what that is it's basically a major scale with a sharp four so if you've got a major scale which is root second third fourth fifth sixth seventh yeah then all you do is you turn the four into a sharp four and then you found lydian that's the way it works so the difference between the two so after lydian the fifth mode and the fifth mode is a special case because this belongs to chord five and the chord five mode well you know what it's a major mode and it lives inside that it lives inside that major pentatonic again that skeleton of the, that pentatonic lives there now this is really useful for to know as well for where you might want to put pentatonics, you know, in a modal manner as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a really cool thing to get your head around. Now, like the Lydian is fairly simple to remember because it's a major scale with a sharp four. The, the uh, um, chord five mode here, the Mixolydian, is easy to remember as well because it's a major scale with a flat seven. Now, the net result is, is it doesn't resolve with the T do. When we listen to a major scale, it goes do re mi fa so la ti, and you can feel that need, that need for the resolution there. So that's the seventh. So what we have to do with that seventh is to drop it down one. Yeah, there's no such feeling there of that resolution. Yeah. So if I play that scale now. Offering the E string for context. So I'm 
sometimes think it can be quite bagpipey. Can mix the Lydian. But you can hear it's got a pretty, uh, a pretty cool sound to it. Now, if you want to play blues, if I put an E7 chord there, that's the scale that goes with it. see some of the scale notes live inside the chord as well so they cross over what I did was I played the blues scale in that position which is what you might play over a seventh chord coming from that E there but you might want it to be not so dark if you listen to the, the blues minor here yeah that flat third Makes it quite dark. Whereas if I play that mixolydian, that major third lifts. Because that's in the chord as well. Yeah. You can see that mixolydian is there so so far so just to recap again ionian which is a major mode dorian which is a minor mode phrygian which is a minor mode lydian which is a major mode mixolydian which is a major mode we've got three major modes so far and two minor modes we've got one more minor mode to come and that is aeolian which is also known as the natural minor or the relative minor so it has a few different names not to be confused that has been separate things they are the same thing so where we play that pentatonic before now on this scale what we do it's not as dark as phrygian but it's quite emotive and if you think people like Gary Moore and soulful sort of uh, sad ballads and solos on that kind of stuff then this is the one that you're looking for the Aeolian mode the Aeolian mode works beautifully with the minor blues scale and the minor pentatonic as well what we get is we get this major second flat third fourth fifth flat six flat seven and then we get the root again there's my bookends can see that that gives us a completely different sound go through these you know systematically in one position part of this thing is is memorizing these scales as well I kind of gave you a method to memorize the scales quickly that video it's up on YouTube but the, this is major here's Dorian same E string that's underpinning it all that E there is giving it context here's Phrygian the next one is going to be Lydian there's Lydian here's uh, mixed Lydian Understand that I think the Grateful Dead use a lot of uh, Mixolydian as well. So you can see that it's got that major quality, but it's not twee. See, that's the same idea there, but I changed it to be as a Mixolydian way of playing it. 
it's a different context you can hear then we get the Aeolian it's a lovely scale is the Aeolian it's one that I think uh, after you've learned your minor pentatonics and your blues scale Aeolian is the one to go to next for the sake of completion I'm going to play the Locrian but you'll hear that it isn't actually that nice and the reason being is I get to explain why with the intervals thing you know so we still have the same bookends we've got a flat second flat third fourth flat fifth which we know it gives us that sound there that tension sound so we've got jaws here we've got the devil's interval yeah, we also have a minor six, which is quite clashy, a minor seven, and then we get the root again. So if I play that all together. It's horrible, isn't it? So that bit there. Oh. But the thing is. Knowing the formula, if you accidentally play it, then you, <laughs> you know how to avoid it. This is what you've got to practice. Sit down with the sheets that I'm going to upload and go through each pattern slowly. Learn the patterns, see the patterns. It's all in one position, so it's really, really easy. So, and, and then what you can do is listen. It's all about listening. What is the mood of the mode? Because the thing is to understand modes, you have to hear the modes. Okay, guys, that's critical. That's the main thing that you need to be able to do. Which mode is the one that does it for you? Which, which mode do you like the sound of the most? Let me know in the comment section. Okay, guys, take care. Hit subscribe for more guitar tips.